I'm going to show you how to make a breakfast soup. Now, this doesn't have to be for breakfast, but it is a common breakfast soup that I serve my husband when he's healing, as he, uh, especially when he was healing from Lyme disease many years ago. This is a soup that is delicious as well as healing. So I don't want to set aside the deliciousness factor. But if you um, do need to heal your gut, which so many of us do, this is a wonderful way to get extremely nourishing healing foods into your gut to help that healing process at the same time that you're providing wonderful nourishment. This is something that several of my children enjoy along with my husband and I, and I hope that you'll give it a try and you may find that your family likes it as well. Now I'm starting with ghee. Of course, my favorite ghee is simply ghee. And I'm throwing a generous dollop of ghee into my already warm pan. And while it continues to warm, I will chop up a little garlic. This is two cloves. You may use more if you like. I am definitely a big garlic fan for many reasons. Of course, it tastes wonderful, but it contains compounds like sulfur, which are also very good for immunity. And it has other benefits as well. So as my pan is continuing to heat and I have minced the garlic, I am also going to say, take some uh, uh, turmeric. This is fresh from my little turmeric patch at home. You may choose to peel it if you like, but I generally do not. But I'm wanting about one tablespoon of chopped fresh turmeric. Should you choose to use dry, that's perfectly fine. You'll just want to use about half as much. This, of course, can be adjusted by taste. I keep spoons on hand at all times so that I can taste whatever it is that I'm cooking. And one more thing will be about the same amount of ginger root. And I just want to make sure that I do not have any unsavory ends of ginger root. And it does tend to be stringy, so I take a little bit of the edges off. Um, the coating of the ginger is more stringy than the turmeric. But again, I am thinly mincing, finely mincing rather, the garlic. You can use a grater if you prefer. I actually would have used a grater, but I can't find mine. Okay, and I'm going to just mix all of this together. So my ghee is now hot. My garlic, turmeric, and ginger are minced. And I'm going to just uh, toss them into the pan and let them soften just a bit. This is on medium-high heat now, but I will turn it down to medium. The next thing to go in will be two cups of good chicken stock, homemade chicken stock, not the stock from the, from the boxes or the cans at the grocery store. That will not do. That isn't real stock. That's flavor <laughs> and not very much of that. Now, you must make your own stock of course, we have videos for this as well. It is very, very easy and inexpensive to do. Now, at the surface of this stock is uh, lots of beautiful fat, schmaltz it's called. I'm going to skim this off, or at least most of it, and save it. 
I will be making chicken liver pate a little later. And to do so, I will need a fair amount of schmaltz. And so here we go. Just set that aside. Okay, my beautiful flavors are softening. So I'm going to, look, look, this is jello. This is jello. This is what stock is supposed to be like. When you make stock properly, you end up with thick, gelatinous, um, tasteful, beautiful, healing, delicious stock. But the stuff from the can, it does not ever look like that, does it? So I have two cups of stock. I'm adding that to my now soft turmeric ginger garlic. And the stock quickly, quickly will uh, of course melt essentially. I am going to add one bay leaf to that. Let me quickly bring that up a little warmer. It's smelling really wonderful right now. This is a Thai inspired dish. Um, I typically throw some lemongrass in here as well. Let me grab that. So the lemongrass is not something that we'll eat, but it does provide a nice flavor. So I'm just going to put a few strands of that into my pan. And another thing that I will add, let me see, here are my herbs. are some basil. Now I prefer Thai, uh, excuse me, Thai basil. It's in there somewhere, but it all got mixed in together. There's a little Thai basil. Um, I do prefer fresh, especially when it comes to herbs, herbs like basil and parsley, because they do lose their flavor as they're drying and getting older. So I use fresh, um, it is very easy to grow these things in pots on a deck, in a sunny kitchen window, where I happen to have an atrium. So in the winter months, my herbs will come inside and live there and continue to grow. All right, I'm going to just mince my Thai basil and I have some Italian basil mixed in there as well. You can just use one or the other. Okay, I'll drop this in. You may wish to use some parsley at the end, but I prefer cilantro and we'll get to that for a moment. But I do also have cutting parsley I have lots of wonderful herbs. I just love cooking with herbs, healing with herbs. When someone is sick, I'll walk outside and snip a nice herb for herb tea, such as thyme and sage and wormwood when someone has a chest infection. But the Indian cultures seem to really just get it right in that they do use food as medicine and that's my motto, my motto, food is medicine. I'm wanting for this to come to a boil, and then I'm going to add two eggs. We're not quite at a boil yet. 
for just at a simmer. And as it is simmering, the herbs are infusing their wonderful flavors into the stock. Almost there. Um, the ghee is a traditional uh, oriental or Indian fat for cooking. Those of you who are allergic to or, in, or sensitive to butter and dairy products should be fine with ghee. You get all of the health benefits, the vitamin A, the essential fatty acids, the D, the K, the K2, all of those things about butter that are good for us, but without the harmful lactose or the proteins, the caseins that are in, uh, in butter because ghee is clarified butter. The milk solids are removed. This stove is a little bit different than my stove at home. This would have been boiling already two minutes ago if I were at home on my own device. But it's close. Turn it up again. And meanwhile, of course, we're getting more flavor. This could just simmer for 15 or 20 minutes before you add eggs. But most of us in the morning don't really want to wait for our breakfast that long. We want to get it made and in our bellies. I take some supplements in the morning, my husband does as well, and those things have to be on an empty stomach. So it's actually okay. We take our, our supplements, including our gut healing supplements, first thing in the morning. While I'm making breakfast, those things are absorbing into our system. While this is making our mouths water. Oh, it just smells so good. All right, we are just about there. I am using fresh pastured eggs. Now eggs from the store look entirely different. These are eggs from my daughter's flock. Of course, I had my own flock for about 30 years, but currently I do not. So I get my eggs from my daughter. Her chickens are eating non-GMO unsprayed grains and they get both my and her uh, kitchen refuse. So all of all of the little bits and pieces that are left over go to feed the chickens. Clean out the refrigerator, it goes to feed the chickens. And they eat bugs all year long, especially from spring until fall when there is abundance of bugs. Chickens are not vegetarians, believe it or not. I wish everyone understood that. I see those packages of eggs in the grocery stores with the labels vegetarian fed. I don't want my eggs or my chickens rather to be vegetarian fed because chickens are supposed to eat bugs. That's the way they're designed to eat. And the consequence of eating bugs and sprouts is that you have beautiful, deep orange egg yolks. Why does the color matter? It matters because it shows the nutri nutrient content just as butter from the store should not be pale, nor ghee. You notice how beautifully rich and dark yellow, almost orange, this ghee is. Well, ditto the eggs. Now that I've dropped the eggs into the hot and steaming broth, I'm stirring. I want to break them up. You don't have to. You could do eggs poached in this and then just consume it all as one soup. But I typically like to have it uh, kind of stirred up. And now I am going to add, there, my adult proof cap. A generous, generous splash of tamari. Please get rid of the and throw it out. It shouldn't be in your kitchen. We want organic because most soybeans, something like 92 or 95% of soybeans grown in the US are genetically modified and very heavily sprayed. 
we're trying to use food as medicine, not poison. So do organic. And the reason for the tamari or the shoyu is that we want a soy that is actually fermented, not brewed as kikomen is. Because soy is very, very high in anti-nutrients, but those anti-nutrients are, um, they're mitigated in fermentation. So go with shoyu or tamari and definitely organic. My eggs are cooked. I am turning this off. And the next thing that I will add is the juice of one fourth of a, of a lime. It will equal about one tablespoon, two, three teaspoons of lime juice. This brightens the flavor. And there is that. And I'm going to add a small bunch of, let me turn it, it's off now. I'm going to add a small bunch of cilantro just the leaves, not the stems. Not that I'm being real particular about that, but the flavor is in the leaves, not so much in the stems. You can take the time and make the effort to strip the leaves from the stems if you like. I'm usually in too much of a hurry. about one third of a cup of chopped cilantro. Cilantro is not just for Mexican or Latin American dishes. It's delicious and common in some of the Asian cuisines. So we want the flavor again to infuse from the cilantro. However, if this were still on heat, the flavors would dissipate into the air. So off heat, I added the, uh, the cilantro leaves. There are two more things I'm adding to this. A spot of sesame oil, toasted sesame oil for flavor, and one can of full fat coconut milk. Now let me just say a word about the coconut milk. This is organic because I do generally buy organic. However, coconuts are not genetically modified yet, and they're not sprayed yet. And so full fat coconut milk is the ticket, not necessarily organic. That is one thing that doesn't matter so much about whether or not it has an organic label. My soup is now finished. And I'm going to pour it into a bowl. This is enough for two people for breakfast, for a hearty breakfast. There we go. And once this is chilled, I can feast on it. But here it is. Maybe we'll add a little salt. Usually I taste it first. The tamari gives it a saltiness on its own, but a little extra salt would be good. And there you have it. Maureen's breakfast soup. Nourishing, healing, and delicious. Mm. Wow. That stuff is good.